स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so the form that i would like to highlight now next is uh, is the solution of the hamilton jacobi bellman equations right okay so hamilton hamilton jacobi jacobi bellman equations so this is an alternate alternate form uh, students who have attended my previous lectures uh, will realize that these equations are similar to the hamilton jacobi equation which used to find the generating function and through the generating function we used to find the optimal or the extremal curves via certain taking certain derivatives right so this time we will see that our generating function in our hamilton jacobi bellman equation are is the functional itself right so well there is so this is bellman equation okay so so what have we got so before we start let me just state the principle of hamilton jacobi bellman optimality condition so it says that the the optimality condition by hamilton jacobi bellman says that any portion of the optimal curve is optimal right so or in other words it does not depend what the solution was at previous times but the times that follow which which satisfies this uh, hjb or hamilton jacobi bellman equation uh, will always be optimal in the future time right so so this is an alternate alternate method for solving optimal control problems alternate method for solving optimal control problems uh, so let me start with the bellman the bellman's principle of optimality the bellman's principle of optimality uh, okay so as i said uh, the the principle says that any portion of the optimal curve is optimal so any portion of the optimal trajectory optimal trajectory is optimal right okay so so as i said the 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 meaning of this statement is it does not depend on the previous times whatever the solution was you just need to look at the future times and the solution to this equation will guarantee optimality for the solution at the future time right or uh, so so what i just said is the following so or uh, the optimal control the oc the optimal control has the property has the property the property that that regardless regardless Uh, of previous regardless of previous uh, decisions or controls uh, regardless of previous decisions or controls the remaining the remaining decision the remaining decision is an optimal optimal policy right the remaining decision is an optimal policy right okay so let us start uh, let us start our uh, basic setup of the problem so we start by defining our performance index so defining our minimum so we start with the optimal or the minimal uh, performance index evaluated at the start condition so we define the minimal performance index to be j star of x star comma t which is the integral from t0 to tf of 
v of x star u star uh, tau d tau right ok. Let me denote this equation by 1 and our interest now is to find uh, our interest is to find the initial value of this functional at time point t 0 right. So, so what is the starting point of this starting value of this functional which leads to this optimal solution right. So, that is what we want. So, our interest our interest interest is to find our interest is to find j of x of t 0 comma t 0 uh, for for any uh, any unspecified unspecified uh, initial condition right. So, let me uh, so, so uh, before I start describing the problem note that I can always find describe my total time derivative of j star at x star comma t uh, well I am writing a shorthand here. So, the, the total derivative by chain rule will be partial j partial x uh, j star at x star comma t. So, this is evaluated at the start condition and well, so we have x star being an unknown. So, we keep it as it is times uh, partial x star partial t which is x uh, x star dot right. So, let me use a bracket plus partial j partial t at the start condition ok x star comma t ok. So, we have used nothing but the chain rule here ok. So, then from here we use my plant condition that x bar dot is f. So, this is nothing but del j del x bar at start condition times f at x bar star u star t plus del j del t at the start condition. Uh, so, so that is what the total derivative of j star at t is ok. And then uh, notice that we can always evaluate this total derivative. Let us look at our expression for j. So, notice that uh, so t is the variable. So, let me let me denote t 0 as my t right. So, my t is the variable. So, t appears as the lower limit. So, so from here from 1 if I differentiate j or uh, take a ordinary derivative of j with respect to t, I get the answer to be minus of v at t right. So, so from 1 from 1 I see that the ordinary derivative of j star at at t gives me minus v of x star comma uh, well what is the argument x star u star comma t right ok. So, so let me call this as 2 and let me call this as 3. So, I can use 2 and 3 to arrive at uh, at an equation. So, from from 2 and from 3 I see that I see the following equation partial j star partial t right these are all evaluated at start condition here plus partial j star at x star times f evaluated at all the start condition. So, this is an equation which is being solved at the optimal value right plus plus v of x star comma u star comma t is equal to 0 right. Okay. So, so now so this equation is nothing but our H J B or Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation that we were after. Okay. So, now further uh, further let us uh, simplify this uh, equation uh, by introducing the Hamiltonian function. So, introduce 
introduce our Hamiltonian h function to be v of, so this is at start condition x star u star comma t plus partial j star partial x star partial j star partial x star of of f comma u star comma t and so this is our start condition and let me call this as 4 and once we introduce this 4 into this this boxed relation i see that my equation changes to so using using 4 i have that partial j star partial t plus h at x star comma j star j x partial j star partial x star comma u bar star comma t is equal to 0 for all t in t 0 to t f and uh, so this is t 0 to t f well I need to be careful here it is a half open interval and that is the form of the h j b equation that we are after. So, this let this is my equation number 5 and this is the form of h j b equation uh, that we will be using in our examples. Okay. Uh, well, there is also the set of boundary, so we have boundary conditions, we have not introduced our cost function in our functional. So, that cost function appears in the form of a boundary condition, uh, so, so that does not vanishes. So, with boundary conditions, uh, boundary conditions as follows, I see that j star at x star uh, t f comma t f is equal to 0 and j star at x star uh, t f well. So, this is the case when s is identical is 0 the cost function and otherwise otherwise this is also equal to the value of the cost function at t f. Okay. So, I call this boundary condition as my 5 a. Okay. So, we still retain the form of the performance index without the cost function because the cost function appears in the form of a boundary condition. Okay. So, then uh, we can compare this h j b equation with our regular Hamiltonian formulation or the Pontryagin uh, Hamiltonian function. So, comparing, comparing our h j b equation or h j b uh, Hamiltonian. So, this is the Hamiltonian that we have uh, noticed that this is the Hamiltonian that we have assumed. Notice that this Hamiltonian has all the components similar to the Pontryagin Hamiltonian except this this circled quantity which initially in the Pontryagin function was lambda. right? So, so that is the difference. So, we compare the h j b Hamiltonian with the Pontryagin Hamiltonian, the Pontryagin Hamiltonian and I see that uh, in that case lambda star must be equal to equal to j del j del x star. right? So, so both the theories they converge if I have lambda the Lagrange multiplier replaced by the partial j partial x uh, partial x at start condition. So, let me call this condition as alpha 1 and uh, and my in that case my optimal optimal co-state equation co-state equation which was lambda. So, lambda bar dot is minus del h del x which is the same as my Pontryagin setup. So, this is alpha 2 <coughs> right or if we are to compare my alpha 1 and alpha 2 we see that uh, we, we have a relation between j and h right. So, comparing so this is from our 
uh, our pontrigin 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 theory okay so comparing comparing our results in alpha 1 and alpha 2 i see that i see that uh, that the time derivative of partial j partial x the time derivative of this quantity is minus of uh, partial h partial x right so this is also equal to d d t of lambda star and this is also equal to minus partial partial x of h x x star comma partial j partial x uh, star comma u star right comma t ok and so so that is the relation between j and between h right so 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 let us now summarize our solution methodology and then we will look at an example right uh, so, the solution methodology for our HJB setup is as follows. So, solution summary. Okay. So, what do we do? First, we form. So, well, so the step 1, step 1 is form the H function, form the Pontryagin, the Pontryagin H function which is h of x bar x bar u comma j star j star x t right so our j star so instead of our lambda so j star x plays the role of lambda or the lagrange multiplier so well i must say that this is our hjb right so Uh, yeah. So, this is our uh, HJB uh, HJB Hamiltonian form the HJB uh, Hamiltonian sorry. So, we are discussing the HJB setup. So, form the HJB Hamiltonian which is also equal to V of x bar u bar t plus j x star of f of x bar u bar comma t and then we are going to minimize as we have done in our Pontryagin case. So right now, we are looking at uh, an unconstrained case. So, we minimize we minimize h with respect to u bar uh, by setting partial h partial u at start condition is equal to 0. So, that is for our unconstrained case and then we find the optimal Hamiltonian. So, say from here I see that u bar star is equal to h of x star comma we have all the other variables t right. We also have a variable j star x. So, j x star comma t right. So, now in the step 3 we are going to rewrite our Hamiltonian. So, find optimal Hamiltonian now by substituting our control optimal control in found in step 2. So, find the optimal Hamiltonian h star of x bar star h of x bar star comma j x star comma t uh, and comma j x star comma t right. We find the optimal Hamiltonian and from there once we have the optimal Hamiltonian we plug it into our H J B equation to find J x star the optimal uh, derivative of the functional. So, step 4 is solve, solve the H J B equation which is J t star plus h of x bar star comma j x star comma t set equal to 0 
and with my boundary condition with my boundary condition j star of x star at t f comma t f uh, which is also equal to s of x bar of t f comma t f. Okay. So, my uh, my h j b equation uh, is the following with the boundary condition as shown and then I am going to use once we find the solution j we have to take the necessary derivatives with respect to x and t to find our optimal control. Right? So, step 5 is step 5 is use j star in step 4 use j star in step 4 to uh, to evaluate use j star in step 4 to evaluate j x star and substitute into u star uh, substitute into u star in step 2. So, use j star in step 4 and evaluate our partial derivatives j x star and substitute in our equation number 2 which will give me my optimal control right to give me uh, my my optimal control solution. Okay. So, that will complete the description of the problem. Okay. So, let us look at a quick example of this solution methodology. So, the problem says the following. So, this is our example number 2. So, the problem is given given a first order order system x dot x dot is minus 2 x plus u uh, typically all functions of t and my performance index uh, j which is equal to half x square at t f plus half integral from 0 to t f uh, x square plus u square d t find the optimal control right. So, so, so we need to find the optimal control for this setup it is a one variable problem. So, the step one we use the step wise solution methodology. So, step one uh, well before even step one we have to identify the various components here. So, my v the, the quantity inside the integrand is half uh, x square plus u square right and my my cost function s is half x square right. So, my so let us start with the solution methodology. So, step 1 h we have to first write the Hamiltonian h of x star comma uh, comma j x comma u star comma t well did we begin with u star or did we begin with u. Uh, we began with u right because we want to find we want to find uh, the we start with the general Hamiltonian. So, so my values are as follows. So, h at these values are v plus j x times uh, f right. So, we are going to plug all these relations. So, v is u square plus x square by 2 plus j x of f, f is well f is minus 2 x plus u right and then in step 2 in step 2 I take the partial derivative of h with respect to u I see that u star becomes minus j x right. We just take the derivative and we will get our answer. So, u star is j x and step 3 step 3 is uh, well using the solution found in step 2 I just replace my optimal value of u star in our Hamiltonian. So, my optimal Hamiltonian h of 
x star comma u star well it is no longer a vector. So, x star comma u star uh, well so comma j x comma t j x star as well is equal to so, so instead of u star I have j x uh, square right. So, that will be after simplification I get the following quantity. So, minus half j x square plus x square by 2 minus 2 x j x right. Okay. So, what have we got here? So, we see that uh, now the next step. So, we have found the optimal Hamiltonian, the next step will be so this is all evaluated at the start condition. The next step is to write down our H J B equation. So, my H J B equation will be so my H J B equation will be j t j t plus h is equal to 0 or this means that j t minus half j x square uh, plus x square by 2 minus 2 x j x is equal to 0. So, note that now we are to solve for the unknown j in this problem and to do that well let us recall the way we used to solve Hamilton Jacobi. In our previous discussion, we have shown that one method of solving Hamilton Jacobi equation namely the separation of variable. We are going to use that idea and separate time and space this time. Okay. Well, uh, assuming that these can be separated, right? so that is a major assumption may not hold all the time. Okay. So, so, what have we got? We see the following. So, assume so step 4 is we are going to solve so have we already used step 4 yes we have used so, so solving so solve h j b equation and let us see what it does uh, we are going to assume assume that my j has the following form notice that i have uh, so i have just used just a hit and trial by separating out my my function of t and the function of x. Now, well it is not exactly hit and trial, but it also a bit of observation notice that uh, why have I used x square because notice that in my original h j b equation I am getting a term x square. right? So, that gives me an indication that if a function h needs x function of x needs to be separated it must appear as a quadratic function right? and then uh, all these halves also suggest that we will have a constant sitting outside. Uh, we will see that uh, this form nicely separates out this H J B equation. Okay. So, so, uh, so also, but before that, let us also see what is the boundary condition. The boundary condition was uh, was uh, J the boundary condition was the following j at j at x at t f comma t f j at x of t f comma t f is equal to s of x of t f comma t f right and my cost function is my cost function is half uh, x square t f. Okay. So, my cost function is the following. Now, if we plug if we plug our form uh, our j x into this relation, I see that I get a boundary condition p at t f is equal to 1. Right? So, at, at time point t equal to t f the separable form must satisfy p at t f is equal to 1. Okay. So, we are ready to solve notice that this form of j x will give me uh, the partial j partial x to be uh, p times x right and my j t to be half p dot the dot means the derivative of the any function with respect to time t times x square right 
and when we plug it into we, we plug it into my h j v equation I see that I get the following equation half p dot of t minus half p square of t minus 2 p of t right plus half this is also equal to 0 right and times well uh, well uh, this is the common uh, well what we had was once we plug our form of j we will get this uh, this factor times x square right and then of course this is set equal to 0 this is all evaluated at the start condition now we cannot have x equal to 0 as the solution because we will then get a trivial solution so then from here uh, the only non trivial solution non trivial solution will be given by the following ode p dot by 2 minus p square by 2 minus 2 p plus half uh, is equal to 0 and this is a standard first order uh, linear constant well not linear but constant coefficient ode and uh, let me write down the solution to this problem uh, students are expected to have a background in standard or solution methods of first order ODEs. I see that the solution is given by the following function square root 5 minus 2 plus square root 5 plus 2 uh, times uh, 3 minus square root 5 divided by 3 plus square root 5 uh, times e to the power 2 square root 5 uh, t minus t f divided by 1 minus 3 minus square root 5 by 3 plus square root 5 times e to the power 2 square root 5 t minus t f. So, what have I found is that this function p uh, is going to certainly satisfy the boundary condition. So, this first order o d will satisfy this boundary condition and uh, students are requested to check that this is indeed the solution. And finally, my final step is to get the optimal control. So, step 5 my optimal control u star is given by is given by minus j x to begin with this is now at the start condition which will be minus p uh, p of t times x where p is given by the following expressions above right. So, note that as uh, we see that as t goes to infinity my function p goes to a constant value which is square root 5 minus 2 or uh, or my optimal control will be of course a purely a function of x right so so that is just an observation and and that is how we solve this class of problems so solve the hamilton jacobi bellman equation and find the optimal control by taking the partial derivative of the solution with respect to x that will give me my optimal value of the control function ok. So, now let me finally introduce two more methods of constraint optimization. So, what happens if we now solve uh, constraint problems uh, where the constraint itself are inequalities as we had seen earlier. So, how to how to set up the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation uh, we will uh, we will see that we are going to introduce uh, similar to our discussion in our uh, earlier lectures we are going to introduce an extra variable and hence a non holonomic constraint which will which will absorb the inequality constraints ok. So, let us see uh, let us see what I just said. So, let me just wrap this up uh, 